to do right now, so let's just pretend I didn't say I knew how to crochet. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Welcome. Yes, it's another math video. For those people who are new to my channel, well, hey, come aboard. Welcome. Great to have you. Here we're doing lesson 2.7. This is Go Math, fourth grade. And this is just awesome because we have been doing this topic on multiplying multi-digit numbers with one-digit numbers, but we learned how to write the numbers in expanded form. And we're going to be doing more of that. And then we're also learning what partial products are, which are very, very important in math as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our topic. There it is. Multiply using partial products. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Our essential question. Yeah. Hello. This is our learning target, our purpose of this lesson. And it says, how can you use place value and partial products to multiply a one digit number? And even though we've done some of this, we are moving in a direction where we get a better understanding of multiplication. But first, we have to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now it says here, connect. It says, how can you use what you know about the distributive property to break apart numbers to find products of three digit and one digit number? Wow. Okay. Sounds big, huh? No, we've done this. This is actually looks, sounds like a little bit of a review. It does say over here, it says, how can you write 182 as a sum of hundreds, tens, and ones? Well, of course, this is like expanded form when you think about it. If the hundreds is 100, wouldn't we just say 100 plus... 80 plus 2. Now, this is the sum. Will that equal 182? I believe so. So that's what we just did. We wrote 182 as a sum of hundreds, tens, and ones. Now, it does say use place value and partial products. Okay, we're going to multiply 6 times 182. First, it tells us to estimate. I like that. When you estimate, it gives you kind of an idea what you think the answer would be. Here, it's really nice because we have just the 6 times 2, right? That's 12. Two powers of 10 gives us 1,200. All right, 1,200. Okay, let's see what we need to do with our model. Ooh, it says shade the model. So we have our estimate. That's setting off to the side. Uh, first thing is we're dealing with the hundreds. It says multiply the 100s. Okay, so I'm going to shade. This is this section here, and I'm just going to do a really quick kind of shade job just so you can kind of see. There we go. So there's my shaded right there. Six times one. Multiply the 100s, you get 600. Yeah. That's pretty simple. Oh, there's the arrow. It's the white arrow. Yes, white arrow. How'd you get there? You're pointing to number two. Hey, as long as you're out of the way. I don't mind. In fact, I might even just color you in a little bit. You don't want me to color you in? Oh, why? Because then you won't be the white arrow anymore. You'll be the red blotch. <laughs> I like that. Yes, you are now the red blotch. Yeah, I don't think he liked that. Okay, so anyways, we come in over here. And we're going to shade in the next section here, right? Because we're looking at the tens. So we would shade this little part right here. Of course, we have six times eight, which is 48. It's like 48 tens. But because we have 48 tens, we have to put on our 10 for a zero. So that would be actually 480, like so. Next, we have our little two. Whee! Okay, just a little guy. And here we just have two times six is 12. And that's it. The end of that story. So a lot of this seems like reviewed to me. So far, we're doing the same thing we did last time. Okay, now we have our model down below. It's showing the one shaded of the six times 100. I kind of only think of, think of the area model like this. We have six times 100, but then here we have plus six times 80 plus, over here, six times two. Because that's really what we're doing. We're adding all these partial products. Sometimes, you know what? You can write them right inside your model. I've done that many times. And then we see it right in front of you. There you go. Now it does uh, have them listed here. It says add the partial products. So I have two, I have nine, and then I have 10 looks like. 1,092, as it says here, yeah, 1,092. Since 1,092 is close to the estimate, this was our estimate, 1,200. It is reasonable, yes. And again, uh, Math Talks, this is how can you use the distributive property to find, well, we're, we'd find it the same way we did here, right? Do an area model, use a distributive property to break up 257, 200 plus 50 plus 7, blah, 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 blah. Kind of the same thing what we just did. Okay, let's see what uh, else we have here. Okay, now we have an example. This is when they give us a little less scaffolding, you know, structure, and we have to kind of do a little bit more work on our own. So it says use place value and partial products. It says multiply 2 times 4,572. Woo, big number now. We're going to estimate. Well, they're rounding to here to the nearest thousand. 
right? Because they could have said, okay, that's either 4,000 or 5,000. And because the five is pretty large, or the five is kind of up to score, it's closer to 5,000, they round it up. Two times five is 10. Be very, very careful. A lot of times people drop a zero here. Don't want to have that happen. We have three more that need to get added on. See, that changes that to 10,000, which of course, yeah, two times 5,000 doubles 10,000. Now it says we're going to go ahead and take two times four, which is equal to 8,000. They're already telling us that. Okay, so I'm just going to write 8,000 here. Right now, this is not standard multiplication. This is not the algorithm. They're trying to get us to see what we're doing. Here we had two times five hundreds. So that's going to be the same as saying 1,000, right? Because you have 500, so 1,000. So we'll put that in there, 1,000. And then we also have two times seven tens, which is 14 tens, which would be the same as, yeah, that's right, 100 and four tens. So if I have 100 and four tens, you can see I have 140 or 14 tens. Now we have two times two, super easy, right? Four, now it says add all the partial products. So if we get four, we get another four, we get a one, and we get a nine. 9,144. Now does it have us do any checking our work? So it doesn't appear so. So it's just a matter of using the partial products. Okay, I was gonna use a standard algorithm, but maybe they don't really want us to do that yet because they want you to really, really learn partial products and the distributive property. Okay, so now we move to share and show. Woohoo, math board time. Get that white math board out, yeah. Use a model to find two times 137. So you can see they have our two here, two times, and we have our 137 in expanded form. That's what this is all called, expanded form, because it's expanded. 100 plus 30 plus 7 will get you right back to 137. Yes. Okay, times two. Now they want our partial products. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I suggested earlier. I'm going to write them right inside my lock. 200. Now my two times 30 is going to be 60. And then two times seven is 14. That way I can just write the colors in. Oh, yeah. 200. I have 60. And I have 14. And of course, I'm just going to add all those partial products. I get four. I get seven. And I get two. 274. Okay, this looks like our last little section here. It says estimate. Yes, then record the product. Okay, estimate first. So if I have 190, what do you think? Times three, couldn't we just say that's 200? So I'm gonna say 200, okay? Times three, super easy, 600, right? Let's see if we get anywhere close to that. So, let's see if our answer is reasonable. Here we're gonna do it the way they suggested, okay? Which is to do the hundreds first, like the largest one, which here is 300. Then we do the 90 times 3, which is 227, because it's tens. We had to put on one zero. And then here, well, if you have zero groups of three or three groups of zero, you end up with zero, right? So there's really nothing. Sorry, you don't get any. But we have to keep maintain that place value, though. If there's zero in the ones place, then we end up with seven and 570. Is 600 close to 570? Yes, I would say so. So I feel good about that. Estimating, the next one, 471. Oh my goodness, that's like 500. We just go round it up. Times four, well, four times five is 20, plus we have two powers of 10. So I'm gonna estimate my answer is 2,000. Let's find out. We have 400 times four. Okay, now remember, this is in the hundreds place, so we have 1,600, or 1,600. Seven times four, 28, but that's tens. So we need to put on that zero for tens. And finally, we have, Four times one, which is four. We simply add four. We get eight, eight, one. There you go. I'm telling you, this is just super easy. Is that close to our answer? Again, 2,000, 1,884, very close. So my answer is reasonable. Last estimation here, I see we're in the thousands still. This is almost close to 3,500. It's a little shy. You could go either way on this one here. I'll say 3,000 and then 3,000 here times, of course, is seven, that's 21. And I have, of course, three powers of 10. So I have 21,000. See if I'm close. First one is 3,000 times seven, which is 21. We already figured that out, 21,000, all right? Now I'm in the hundreds place. I have 28, 100. I can put in my 100 first. Here's my hundreds, my two zeros, and then my eight, two. So they're lined up. Here's tens. So I can put in my one zero, and then I have 21. We don't have any tens, hundreds, so it's just, 63. Now we simply add. Three, seven, 10, carry the one. That's three, that's four. We end up with 24,073. 
Well, that's pretty close to 21,000. I like it. What can I say? Oh, boo-hoo. The end of the math video. No. You must go on, Mr. Warren. Yeah. In another video. Because this one's over, my friends. It's over. That's why the music's playing.